So let's go into the definition. What is codependency? And the basic definitions look like this. Someone who cannot function, and this is the extreme side of codependency, and it's on a continuum, by the way. So just see this as a, there's an extreme codependent behaviors and there are less extreme codependent behaviors. So someone who cannot function from their innate self and whose thinking and behavior is organized around another person, process, and substance. So one, some people say, well, isn't that parenting? Not really. That's a parent that can't function, right? But a parent that functions well has to organize some of their life around their child. They have to organize their life to a point around another person. So we're leaving parenting out of this because that's a unique situation. But what happens is if we have an innate sense of self, we become a better parent. So just know that someone who cannot fall back on themselves in a very healthy way is, is part of codependency. Two, it's an over-responsibility impulse gone awry. I mean, it's gone berserko. We think we're responsible for things that we're not when we're in the codependent mode. We take on other people's stuff that they could be doing. We take uh, the boundaries get really blurred between where we begin and where they end and we lose ourselves. So big, big, important part going to the next definition. People call codependency the disease of the lost self. And then the fourth one is low priority of their own needs preoccupied with the needs of others. So how many of y'all have stayed awake late at night worrying about someone else whose life you couldn't control? <laughs> Wish I could see your hands, right? You're welcome to put it in the chat, right? How many of you have laid awake worrying about a family member? Yes, I see some thumbs up. Thank you. A friend, a parent, a loved one. Yes, we do this, right? We lay awake and worry about people. As we recover from codependency, we begin to find a way to let go. And I love that saying they use in Al-Anon and Coda, keep our head where our feet are, right? Keep our head where our feet are. Because this alignment, mind, body, and spirit, when we're lined up with our present moment, we worry less. We are more fully in the moment. We're more connected to our wiser self. You know, in dialectical behavior therapy, DBT, they talk about your wise self. And we all have a wise higher self that we can connect to. And you may call that your spirit. You may call that God. You may call that um, your soul. Um, lots of names for that inner sense of nudging, pulling, what feels accurate. But when we're in codependency, that gets all confused. And what feels normal and healthy is a survival mechanism. It's not the highest nature talking. So there's a conflict and we may feel that conflict when we're trying to do what's best for ourselves and others. So codependency can also show up in certain areas of your life and not in others. Like I've had family members that are very codependent when they go home with their spouses, but are not codependent when they go to work. They can set healthy boundaries. They know where they begin and others end. They don't take on other stuff. And they're very clear. It's super easy in that domain. But when they hit another domain, they fall back into those old behaviors. So just know this is a wide conversation we're going to be having today. And I'd love to hear your opinions on it. Look at the chat. Yes, she said, being in the profession, it's hard not to be. Right. We get rewarded and paid for giving, 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 giving. Right. And so we're going to learn today how not to let that over responsibility impulse go awry. The other thing I'm going to be sharing with you, since I have my licensed clinical mental health counselor degree, but I also have a doctorate in spiritual psychology. And in this work, I'm going to be sharing with you, there's a process that helps with codependency in your professional life. And it's a process that allows the client to align with their inner wisdom, their inner healer and their inner knowing so that they can be in charge of their lives and we don't have to have the answers for them, which helps step, step us out of that codependent role. It's very, very powerful. So I'll talk more about that again later as well. So personally and professionally, we're going to look at ways to recover. Ooh, my thing is not working like I want it to. There we go. So what is a healthy relationship? Like I mentioned earlier, healthy relationships have four distinct stages. Now, it's not like, oh, I complete this one stage and then I go into another stage. 
And health for a relationship is also a, a continuum, isn't it? It may be that I'm trying to get out of a violent, abusive relationship. It may be that I'm in a fairly healthy relationship where I feel pretty secure and healthy. However, there's some patterns there that are still dysfunctional and harmful to myself and the person in the pattern. And so wherever you are on that continuum or your clients are, just know that we can continue to heal. You know, I ended up years later, I had struggled with having a healthy relationship because I, I grew up in an addictive family system. And so to have a healthy relationship there, we had to revolve our lives around the addict, which was my dad. And I had to revolve around him because he was the chaotic, crazy one who was also very loving and sweet and kind until he took a drink. And so the whole system got set up around his needs. And a lot of my needs got neglected. A lot of my brother's needs got neglected. My mother just completely neglected herself and worked like a, a work Trojan. She was highly codependent. And so this became what was normal. And many of you may have a story like that where you grew up with a rageaholic or an alcoholic or a very chaotic mental health issue in your family or a sister or brother who had a developmental disability that took all the air out of the room. Whatever that was for you, it sets up a very wobbly dysfunctional family system. And then that becomes normal. And so then when we're trying to find a healthy relationship, there's a lot of healing to do. So it took me years to find a healthy relationship and find out what felt normal and what was dysfunctional and what wasn't. So I'm thrilled today to be sharing with you what I've learned as well as what I've seen work with clients. So one of the things I've learned that works really, really well is giving clients and knowing ourselves where we are in this developmental stage of building a healthy relationship. And so this was refreshing to me when I learned this. Codependency is normal. It's the first stage of every relationship, that bonding stage, the oxytocin, all the yummy dopamine, all the, oh, only seeing the good in the person mostly, right? La, 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 la land, we call it, right? <laughs> and so it's that bonding with each other, that is that hope that everything is going to be good all the time. And, you know, of course, if we're a little older, that doesn't always happen right away. At the beginning of a relationship, we may be more jaded and very counter-dependent, which is we're going to go into talk about what that is next. But, <laughs> we, but most relationships start with codependency. And in this psychosocial task, we're supposed to grow through this. We're supposed to bond, enjoy, have fun, learn each other, but and establish these parameters in this thing and begin to value each other and fall for each other in that way. And so the first stage of the relationship looks codependent and people are like, oh my gosh, I've lost my friend. She's in this relationship now and I never see her anymore, right? Or, oh my gosh, I, um, you know, I, there's somebody that's going to rescue me from my own life. And that's that codependent feeling. It's not true. We can't stay there. It's a stage. And so how do we move out of this stage? Because codependency is addictive. I just want to tell you all this. They call it the root addiction of all addictions. And I used to work in the addiction field years ago. I worked at a treat 12-step treatment center. And what we found is if someone would get off drugs and alcohol and stay clean, they would go relapse because they'd get in a codependent relationship and lose themselves again, especially women. Now, men did it too. I saw it happen to men. They would lose what was best for them, stop taking care of themselves and fall into this la-la land of a relationship and lose their identity again and again and again. It was like the rug of their recovery was pulled out from under them. So often in recovery rooms, they'll say, don't get in a relationship till you're in recovery for a certain period of time. That's why. Because it's hard to maintain a sense of self that you're just developing off of drugs and alcohol and deal with all of this coming at you and those old patterns. So very challenging thing to move through the codependent stage as you're recovering. But if we don't get to that root addiction of all addictions, people don't stay clean for a long period of time, or they don't have happy relationships. They have dysfunctional adrenaline-based relationships that have a lot of drama. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm sure you've had them or you've seen them. And they're painful. They are painful and they're very stressful, very, very stressful. 
Have y'all seen those relationships where they're stuck in the drama triangle constantly based on adrenaline? They're almost, it's almost like an addict all over again. That's the codependent stage. Yes. Everybody's like, yes, I've seen it. Or yes, I'm in it, right? <laughs> so the next stage as we get through these tasks is counter dependency. And this is a funny one. I can remember moving from this stage, codependent to counter dependent with my husband. He's a psychologist and we were a little older when we met. And I'd been engaged three times, if this gives you any clue about how challenging it was for me to find a healthy situation to be in. I had great relationships. I don't mean it that way, but I wasn't. I was more counter-dependent as well. You can be both, codependent and counter-dependent. I was tough girl. I can do it myself. I've got it. I don't need anybody or anything. Can y'all relate to that one? Yeah, that's counter-dependency. I don't need anyone or anything or anybody. I've got this. And it's a bypass. It's not true. We need each other. But in a stage of development, people are saying, yes, I can get this counter-dependent thing. I'm down with it, right? <laughs> yeah. In this, in this stage of development, we need to say to ourselves, hey, okay, I'm tough, right? Yeah, I can do it myself, but I prefer to be in a, a healthy relationship. I prefer to be with someone to do life with. And I'm going to continue to allow that in and find my sense of self. That's the biggest task in a counter-dependent stage. We want to move through this stage. We don't want to be too tough where we blow it, but we also want to have a sense of ourselves to separate. So I remember when my husband moved into this stage, he kind of knew we were going to be in a relationship and was more secure faster than I was. So then what I did, what I remember he used to come around the office all the time. He, we were in the same office. He would look in. He was always available to go on a walk at lunchtime. He was very available, kind of around all the time. And when he realized he kind of had me, you know what I mean? Like we were kind of a thing. We were an item. Then he kind of got more into his own life again. He started working more. He started pulling away more. And I remember being freaked out by that because here we were in this little bonding, loving, predictable thing. And he began to separate psychologically from me. And it scared me. I thought this meant that we were, something was wrong. But what I realized was this was a healthy stage. And this, and I cried about it. I was like, oh, I guess we're not going on a walk every day at lunch. Oh, I guess, you know, blah, uh, uh, right? But, you know, it's like, so we had to resolve this. We had to learn to work together to say, okay, I really would love for us to be able to walk together a couple days a week then, because I get that you have another life besides me now. We're out of the codependent stage. We're into our own new lives. And so we had to learn to separate and move into a more balanced agenda for each of us. And this came with some tears and feelings and bargaining and compromise, but we continue to work to resolve this stage. And this is the powerful stage of counterdependency. Third stage, independence, mastering self-sufficiency. You've got you, you've got your higher power. You've got this form of you. You're your own highest authority. This is the independent stage. You and your higher power are your highest authority. You take feedback. You appreciate the loving, supportive nature of your partner. But you, you work with this. But you know that you are your own island and you can have a connection with another island and build this bridge that's super healthy. So this is the independent stage and it feels really good. They sometimes call this secure attachment in the attachment field, right? You're less anxious. You're because the counter codependent, counterpendent stage, you're feeling anxious, you're feeling disorganized, you're feeling ambivalent. All those in all those attachment patterns are continued to have to be worked through. You have to keep working through all those attachment patterns in those first two stages. Independent stage, they begin to settle down, settle down. And you begin to work on cleaning up the boundaries. Maybe you've been doing too much in this one area and maybe you need more help in this area. Maybe they've been overgiving in a certain area and something else needs to be worked out. Some Maybe something new needs to develop and grow. Again, this is an ongoing thing. It takes energy to build the garden of a healthy relationship. And then the last stage, interdependent. And that's when you guys are secure enough and you've got these things figured out enough. We're not talking perfect. You know, and it's in the attachment world, they say 60% of the time you have to be doing healthy enough things to feel secure. Just 60%. We're not going for perfection, guys. 
And then the other 40% is a work in progress, right? You still may hurt each other's feelings. You still may do things the other one doesn't like. You still may step on each other's toes. You still may fall into old patterns, but you can, you can repair them, right? This is where the interdependence comes in. And in the interdependence stage, what makes it different is you and your partner become good for the world. You become good for the community. You become good for those around you. You become an inspiration to other people because you've got your stuff together, right? You have a more interdependent way of being and your relationship doesn't take so much work. It still takes work, but things flow easier. Can y'all relate to this? Yeah, you maybe been there in your relationships. And again, these are stages that are malleable, flowing, good, yeah, flexible, and they're in a work in progress. So I hope that's helpful to give you a little graph of what a healthy relationship can look like. And I give these to my clients. We identify where they are and we do the deeper healing around the stage that they're trying to master. They also need another good partner in crime, though, don't they, to master the stage? You know, they can't do it alone, but they have to work with where they are and what they're given. They can't do it for the other person, right? They need another willing participant, though. Without another willing participant, it becomes an unpredictable variable for having a healthy relationship and it's harder.